Good afternoon and welcome to Vespers at Charter House. I am Pastor Rachel Hansen and this is our service of evening prayer. You are invited to watch every Sunday afternoon at four or if you would like to, you can also come to the chapel in person and enjoy Vespers uh, here in person. There is no limit on the number attending and there is no signing up. You can just come to the chapel and everybody's wearing a mask so that we protect our vulnerable elders from any possible variant or breakthrough infection. So you can come, just come and enjoy the live music and the live speaking and seeing each other. We are in the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We celebrate two of the beautiful miracles of Jesus, the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water. And I invite you now to pray with me the prayer of the day, let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 145, verses 10 through 18. All your work shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Let us pray. Loving God, you are faithful in your promises and tender in your compassion. Listen to our hymn of joy and continue to satisfy the needs of every living thing that all your creatures may bless your name, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. Listen to the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up all the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. 
So they gather them up and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled the 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. Here ends the Gospel reading. Our Gospel text today is the centerpiece of the good news in John. Here we have in chapter 6 two miracles, John's telling of the multiplication of loaves, the feeding of the 5,000. This is the only miracle included in all four Gospels, and Jesus walking on the water. I invite you to see the sacred text through a lens of personal intimacy with Jesus, personal closeness to him, and look at it through that lens. For example, only in John does Jesus distribute the bread with his own hand, the bread and the fish. With his own hand, he gives it to them. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the disciples distribute the bread. And being human over the years, we have taken this to mean a church hierarchy. But in John, it's up close and personal. With his own hand, he gives it. In John, we have direct communion with Jesus from his hand to ours. In John, Jesus' presence with the believer is for the totality of life. His Eucharistic presence, his presence in the Holy Communion. Throughout the pandemic, I would share in communion with my congregation from my home at 8.30 on Sunday mornings. This was streamed online from my church and I would fix a tray at home with some beautiful panettone from a friend that I toasted. And then beside it, I would place one of my crystal wine glasses with a little bit of Greek Cipero from my daughter's monastery with some Swedish glug from some friends to make it red, to make it look red. I know this feast was sumptuous. I know it was beautiful. Far from the humble morsel shared in John 6, yet it brought me near to people that I love and to Jesus himself. And I'm just wondering, what did you do for communion during the pandemic. And I really would like to know if you could stop by and tell me, what did you do to taste and see that the Lord is good? Readers often feel that John, the Gospel of John, is way too wordy. But this Gospel also wakes us up with its directness. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus takes bread. But in John, Jesus takes barley loaves, specifically. According to the great John scholar, Raymond Brown, this is real food. Barley was the bread commonly available to the poor. This is the messianic banquet for the poor, spoken by the prophets for centuries and hoped for by the people for many generations, 
the Messianic banquet for the poor. Raymond Brown also calls to our attention the realism of the fish. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they say ichthys fish, a well-known abbreviation for Jesus' name. Jesus, Son of God, Savior. Sometimes it's even embroidered onto our altar cloths. But John, John uses the word opsarian, dried fish. John tells us about real food for real hunger. And of course, the people get really excited. They get the point that Jesus is the one who is to come. And Jesus sees this, that they would make him king. But a more literal translation is that he knew they were about to grab him or snatch him. No wonder that according to the new RSV, Jesus withdraws in verse 15 from their tactics. A more difficult translation, a more literal translation is that he fled back to the mountain again to get away from them, to be alone. And the disciples are left to their own devices. They take the initiative, they get in a boat and push out on the lake. Now, darkness is a very important thing in John, and darkness makes one of eight appearances in this gospel. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them in verse 17. The crowd is gone, and so is Jesus gone. We look to the disciples in the boat, and we see that they were truly in the dark. And it brings back those times when we have been in the dark, too. Unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where the story is told from Jesus, from the Jesus perspective, in John, John puts us right there in the boat with the disciples. As those who look for Jesus in the growing chaos and the darkness of a stormy sea, and can you feel the safety, the sense of reassurance when Jesus speaks those ancient words? Those words known to every child alone. Those words that every adult longs to hear who doesn't truly know what to do next. Every mob of people teetering on the brink of madness and violence, I'm here. It's me. I am here with you. Don't be afraid. Ego eimi in Greek. These words are the, the same words that God said in the very beginning. I am that I am. I am being. I am God. Hearing Jesus say I am like this evokes the almighty God and with it a sense of great, impassable distance, and at the same time, their fear vanishes in an instant because he's right there with them. Friends, sometimes we want Jesus on our own terms, but then we don't want Jesus, but rather we just want our fill of whatever fills us. We have lived in desperate times, times that have tested us. But instead of getting our fill, John would have us see Jesus, the one who is the messianic banquet for the poor. What does that mean? It means that Jesus would have us care for and feed everybody, the poor. That's his heart. What has this got to do with us? Well, we are the community who has chosen to follow Jesus. So John places us in the boat with the disciples on a rough sea, under cover of night, wanting but not having Jesus in their possession. And how many times over the past two years have the winds and waves of pandemic and social upheaval gripped our families and narrowed our imaginations down into a tunnel vision. 
Or could it be that we, in this turmoil of the last year or so, have begun to recognize the nearness of Jesus, how close he is to us in our need? Have we seen him walking over the water of the world that is in darkness? People of God, it's like we're rowing in a boat, a small boat. And when you're rowing, pulling the oars, you can physically see only what lies behind. A piece of wisdom I read this week from an Alcoholics Anonymous group. One wrote, he, quote, has learned to see the past as a reference point, but not as a residence. The past, only a re reference point, not our residence. But how will we ever get through the dark and make it to our destination? The brutal truth, according to scholar of St. Augustine, James K.A. Smith, is this, and I quote, you, you can't get there from here. Not even a map is enough. You might already have realized where you need to go, but the question is how to get there. What if God sent a boat? What if the Creator captained a ferry from that other shore? Through Jesus, speaking to us and reaching out his hand to us with a piece of bread, we ourselves receive these same gifts. Through Jesus' life-giving power, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray together the prayers of evening, ending with our Lord's Prayer, using the word sins and sin. Let us pray. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely for you are our help and you neither slumber nor sleep. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It has been good to share Jesus' word with you today and to pray with you. And I invite you now to receive the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.